So this is our annual uh, one book faculty panel. I know that I always get ideas for things to do with my students at this event, which is why, and you all probably do, which is why you keep coming back. Um, so this year we have six panelists from uh, a few different areas, a few different disciplines. Each person is going to introduce him or herself and uh, talk about the course that they're using the book in um, and how they're using the book. Each person will speak for about five minutes or so. That way we'll all have time to ask questions after and get a conversation going, which I know is usually the most exciting part when we can all talk to each other. So um, Mike, if you want to start. Sure. Uh, hello. Oh, coffee too, sorry. <laughs> and there's coffee. Hello, my name is Mike Gary. I'm an associate professor of English, and I'm using uh, Walk in the Woods for two of my sections of English 101, uh, both a face-to-face -face version and my fully online late start version of the class. Um, in the online class, it's the second assignment of the semester, and the face-to-face -face class, it's the third assignment of the semester, and I'm using it as well for the research component of the class from English 101, one of the requirements the students are required to engage in academic research and to integrate that in a meaningful way um, into an essay. So what I did is I gave them three options for what they can do, and the options are kind of inspired by um, pieces of the text that they're gonna be reading. Um, specifically, I'm using chapters one through four and eight through 10, and both of my sections will be reading those uh, sections of the text. Um, the first option that I'm giving them, suppose you were going on a multi-day hike on the Appalachian Trail, Given what you have read in Bryson's text, what, would you, what do you think would be the most important items for you to bring with you? In answering this question, you'll need to identify specific brands of items and justify why you would choose them. And your thesis should answer this question, which specific items are most essential for surviving on the Appalachian Trail and why? I thought it would be interesting for them to kind of explore what some modern equipment would be since um, now Bryson is recounting an experience from a couple of decades ago. So certainly there's some new resources that would be available and for them to also use their imaginations of what they think would be most important. Second option, suppose your friend told you that he or she was going to hike the Appalachian Trail and this friend was completely ignorant about the threats posed by bears. Um, <laughs> well, the old chapter that we talks about, well, there's the black bear, the grizzly bear, um, either one could get you. Um, in an expository essay, explain how hikers should protect themselves from bears. Since Bryson mentions the grizzly bear and the black bear, you may choose either bear as the focus for the essay. For this option, you will need to cite at least one wildlife expert as a source. They don't want them to just go out there and grab a hold of Joe Bob's hiking site and cite it. So they should uh, at least have a wildlife expert in there. And then thesis should answer the question, what are the most important precautions that a hiker should take to avoid being mauled by a bear and why? And then the third option, slightly different angle. Suppose you're interested in visiting the Smokies and wanting to explore, explore Gatlinburg. However, Bryson's attitude toward the town has made you question whether or not you want to spend any time there. In a comparison and contrast, as they decide whether or not your research, would, your research would allow you to view Gatlinburg more favorably or less favorably than Bryson does, your thesis should answer this question. Does Bryson's commentary on Gatlinburg reflect the current state of the town and why? In case they want to explore or travel, get them the idea of actually researching a destination before they wind up going there. Um, for the assignment, they're required to use four sources. Um, two of them can come from the web, but two of them have to come from the library reference databases. Um, and I'll be having a reference librarian come to class to give a presentation on this. I'm going to be working on a way to get that same presentation embedded into my online class. And then this doesn't need to be a long assignment. It's max, max of four to five pages for it. And again, they get to kind of pick and choose uh, who they want to be. The, uh, I guess we could say the travel agent, uh, the environment, the uh, nature uh, specialist uh, about bears, or do they want to actually uh, be the hiker? So it gives them some different scenarios. Great. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Are you good? I am. I met you six years ago, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I do want to talk to you a little bit. But... <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. I'm Bill Pat. I've been t teaching, teaching here for a few years, five or six years now. I've been teaching for much longer at River Island College. I've been involved in the One Book pro Program there going back to 2006 when we first started. But what I'm, what I'm going to be doing this semester is, my, I'm going to be doing it later in the semester. 
structure after structure I've come up with that works well for me is doing an English 101. I do it in my composition courses here and here and at, at other schools for about half, about half a semester, leading, culminating in a research in a research paper, formal research paper with the librarian coming in. But I do a lot of informal papers along the way. Every before any formal paper comes comes up, I have students doing informal essays, homework at homework essays, where they're trying to answer different kinds of problems, trying to get them thinking in different ways about it. So some of the things that I'm looking at doing, doing here. And something that I may or may not come I'm not going to talk about now, literary, literary connections. There's lots of connections, with, especially with Whitman and Thoreau, and other Americans, other American liter Americans in the Romantic era, with the connections to little nature. And also a big connection to Huckleberry Finn, because Huckleberry Finn ends with Huck saying, well, if civilization gets me too much for me again, I'll just light up the territories. And I think that's, I think, a big theme in American thinking, lighting out the territories, being able to go someplace and get wild. And some of, some of the research, so a lot of research areas are possible. I do it when I'm teaching the one book, we do brainstorming along the way on different possible topics or related topics. So they have a lot, they have the book to give them kind of focus, they're not just drifting, which I used to do and didn't work as well. <clears throat> but at the same time, they have a lot of possibilities. I mean, so a lot of interesting I mean, the things you, things you mentioned were really some great ideas. Some other, some other things, well, just the wilderness itself, and the, play, the position of wilderness in American society and how it's paid for. That's something that happens. I worked with the environmental department for a long time as a writer, and there's a lot of interesting, interesting things there. A lot of, a lot of people have no idea. People who don't even, would never hunt or fish and aren't interested have no idea that the people who hunt and fish are going to have a lot to do with us having green space to go to because their, their taxes pay for, pay for those areas. So there's interesting possibilities there. Some of the, I, mean, I, I see some interesting gender issues, or really implicit gender issues, and there's a reason, part of the reason why I'm thinking I'm going to mention. But the activities we're talking about, are they, are they traditionally tied to one gender? Yeah, doesn't mean that women don't like hiking, hiking, don't like hunting, don't like that stuff. Too many do. On the other hand, my my, my wife's favorite slogan is "I love not camping." <laughs> but yeah, there, there are some gender issues. There are some gender issues there between. There's some issues of the search for serenity, the escape, the Huck, the Huck Finn escape, the escape from civilization, the escape from what Forster called the the world of mortgages and telegrams escape from businesses, escape from commercialism, all that kind of escape, getting back to necessities, getting back to bare necessities. You're looking at some of those things. Besides, I, I, thought, I thought too about having to look at equipment, look at, look at Bella Bean's catalogs, go to, go to outfitters and price equipment and think about what, what, kind, of, what kind, of prop, kind of equipment they would, they would want to get. And how ironic it is that the escape from technology involves using high-tech stuff. But yet, at the same time, rejecting some high sex. So something I really want to mention, which I should have thought of three weeks ago, like just suddenly hit me at midnight Monday. This late August, my wife and I saw went to a women's theater festival, plays by women and directed by women. And one of the plays was a pair of one act plays. Which I'm still trying to get the name. Yes, Echoes on the Peaks, Two Tales from the Appalachian Trail by Deborah DeGeorge Harvey, a New Hampshire playwright who submitted her play, which was performed at the festival. Two, acts, two, diff two different tales, both involving haunting. There were ghosts in both, but the real haunting in both was bad males not behaving so well. In one case, one of the other one that placed the issue of looking for some kind of purity. There was a, this, this guy was with his partner many years when he never read him, he never married. <clears throat> got, got, her, got her case when she found, she brought her cell phone, she dared bring her cell phone and muddy the waters or whatever. But when he found out she was pregnant, he said, oh, you gotta have to go home. I'm not going home with you because this is my dream, I want to do this. The other was, the second tale, that was the, the really cool one, was all, they were also haunted by a ghost of a woman who died on the trail a century before. The other one was also very, very cool. Was, 
two couples, and the, one of the women had fallen into a course. The guy said, ah, oh, she's not gonna come out alive. I'm gonna go get more. Only she came back. He eventually turned out to be the ghost. He came back to warn him, to tell him it was okay. So, so lots of interesting things can, can come up with, with, with gender issues, even looking at some, even looking at, I might not have thought of it, but I hadn't seen that play. But there's some, some interesting issues there. Some other ways to connect to students. Some, some, not all students are gonna connect to this, some students, but some students may have been in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or the mil and or the military. So there's gonna be some students have that experience. <coughs> One thing I thought about since Realistically, I cannot tell them to go hike the Appalachian Trail or even a little bit of it, but I can tell them to do something like that. The ones who have the time and energy might go to Caraton Refuge and Seacon or Caitlin Park, watch Mount Wachusett in North Central Mass has some very nice hiking trails. But you know, a local thing, Caitlin Park, and Caitlin, you're still getting some sense of the experience. Have them go there. Spend some time there, look around, reflect, write about the feelings they get from that. And even more fundamental, it's also, I always have my students do, some, do, a, do a field observation somewhere along the way earlier in the class where they go out somewhere, they talk about people, they observe people, take notes, and look at the, analyze the behaviors. So now, besides doing, having had that for practice, I will have them do some more people watching, watching people walk. See what they can think they can find out about the people or interpret about the people. How physically, emotionally, what state the people are in just from seeing them walk. So that's all for now. Thanks, Bill. No, you're welcome. Lynn? Hi. I'm Lynn Dowdy. I'm the acting quest reading specialist this semester. I'm also an adjunct reading faculty in divisions one and six. Uh, for the one book. I'm using it in the Reading 090 Quest section that I teach. Um, we're starting by reading the book two chapters a week. Now I know this seems a little much for Quest sections, but we're doing one chapter in class by reading and or my in-class tutor can help read, or they'll do them in reading groups, or I'll have volunteers read them. And we started on Tuesday, and it's gone very, very well. They do like the Sunday in the book. On the 6th, we're going to the library. I've asked, I've been working with Emily to come up with a lesson plan for them, which would involve research databases and other resources in the library of academic resources, and how to choose what is a good one versus not so good academic research material. And from there, I'm going to give them an informational sheet that they are going to fill out that lists several topics of interest that have come out of the book. And not only have I chosen some of these topics, but the students as well have come up with their input on this. And they're going to choose a topic, and from there, they're going to research three different articles on that topic. Some of the topics are deforestation, um, I also put gender <coughs> issues down, I thought that was interesting. Uh, weather patterns, I've got history of the AT, maybe diseases spread by insects, uh, the benefits from hiking, physical exercise, and, and health benefits, and the Pennsylvania coal mining and Centralia issue, which I thought was very interesting, that is still burning. So I thought that was very, very interesting. So there's, it will be added to those topics. And of course, the students will be able to kind of, you know, carve them themselves too as well. And from each article then, they will have to come out with an annotation for it. They will have to do their main ideas. They'll have to find what the main points are. Since they're Quest students in 090, they, got to go through the process of reading and learn the strategies. So the strategy will be done for them. They're going to do that. And then they will summarize each article. And then in class, we'll have like a peer workshop and look at each other's drafts and help each other with the annotation. So that's like part one, I guess. 
And once they finalize that, they're gonna turn it in to me, hopefully sometime around midterm. And later, part two then, they're going to use their sheet from the library, the three articles and their summaries, and come up with a reflective piece, an essay, a two-page essay, where they're going to reflect on the topic and the book as a whole, and hopefully by November, we would have gotten through a good part of the book. And that's basically what I'm going to do with the class. I don't have the lesson plan per se totally detailed yet, but I do have an informational sheet that I am going to turn into them um, on Thursday tomorrow when I meet with them again. And we'll just, they'll learn the study skills as we go along and they can fill in the sheets and they're gonna learn a lot of different things with this book, so. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah. I, um, I should have mentioned before too that this one book panel um, is now named after our dear colleague that's passed, Sally Gabb who is a founding member of One Book, and I was listening to you thinking how much you would appreciate the way that this book is being used in reading classes. Oh, yes. Very good. Thank you. Jill. Hi, um, I'm Jill Flanagan, and I'm uh, from the Health Information Management Department in Division Four. The class that I'm using the book in is uh, International Classification of Disease Coding. And uh, so my assignment instructions are actually much simpler than um, the uh, descriptions that uh, others have given, um, carrying them out is, uh, is the difficult part, right? not, the, uh, not what it is. But uh, International Classification Disease Coding, um, this coding manual includes uh, classifications of diseases, injuries, and causes of injury. And um, with, with that information, I, I'm sure you realize there were quite a few of those represented in the book. <laughs> um, so the uh, assignment I've given is, uh, uh, I would say, as you read uh, Bill Bryson's A Walk in the Woods, look out for diagnoses, conditions, causes of injury, or other health statuses that can be assigned to an IC-10 CM code. Uh, and I've asked them to record the page number, the word or phrase that they identified, and then to look up and assign a code to that. The interesting thing about that process is that it's really the same process that you use when you code from a medical record, because you read the record and you abstract out the key words and key information that you are going to assign a code to. So it's exactly the same process, but when I gave this assignment in class, everyone was so excited about it and that they were going to be doing something so new and different, and really it's, it's the same thing that they, they do do. Um, but to give you an example of the kinds of things that they can find here to code, uh, I pulled out just a couple of phrases off of page five. Um, there's a paragraph on page five where um, he talks about um, a, a new coat, new hiker going off into the woods and uh, coming back with a bobcat attached to his head or dripping blood from an armless sleeve and whispering in a hoarse voice bear. Um, so I picked out a couple of phrases from that. I said an armless sleeve was something I could code. So I, I looked up traumatic amputation of an arm and assigned a code for that. And the bear is something I can code. So bitten by a bear is, a, is something that is codable as a cause of injury. So just, that just gives you a couple of examples. They'll be able to find, I think, hundreds of things that they can assign codes to. And it'll give them great practice with looking up codes, and especially a lot of practice with those cause of injury codes, because I think that's what they're really going to find the most of. And it's, uh, it's an area that's a little bit, a little bit trickier to, to carry out. So. Uh, I think it'll be helpful for uh, practicing the skills. Very creative. Then they'll never forget some of those yes, very creative. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. And? Uh, Amy. Oh, Amy. Hi, I'm uh, Amy Vera. I'm a part-time adjunct teaching English 101, and this is my first time using one book. Um, this is also my first time reading Bill Bryson, and he's kind of fantastic. He's funny, <laughs> he's readable. Uh, it's a piece of nonfiction, but he's still telling the story and doing it in an interesting way, and using some of the strategies that have been mentioned before from literature, um, you know, integrating in different pieces of information from different fields. I'll be using 
a walk in the woods toward the second half of the semester as you know, a way for my students to use some of the strategies for navigating a longer text. We are dealing with a growing cultural phenomenon of 2LDR, too long, didn't read. It's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about how do we process information, how can we take notes effectively so that we can then communicate information to others, support an argument, use evidence from the text, um, and they'll be doing just that with some in-class work, you know, prepping their critical article, doing some reflections, and finally, creating a longer formal essay that integrates in some outside information, whether it's articles, uh, interviews with the author, um, connections to some of the other fields, such as green technologies, or even you know, the health of Americans, the fact that they, he mentions in the book that Americans don't walk anywhere. So things like that, or taking, if they want to, more of a travel literature, um, literary spin on it. So there are different ways they could go. I'd like to help them go through developing a topic, finding some of the research materials, and creating their arguments. It would be great to, you know, either as part of the smaller assignments, or even as something a little extra, encourage them to go to some of the events that are being put on for this, reflect on that. Um, and I'm teaching a Saturday course, so I understand that some of my students are taking a Saturday course for a reason. It means they're only there on Saturday. So making sure that I have some options that don't involve doing too much extra, something they can always access. Um, I'll leave the computer for this one. Um, <laughs> so a lot of the things I'm doing are similar to Lynn. Um, I am teaching a Reading 90 course this semester. I teach Reading 90. English 101, I'm sorry, English 090, and I also teach CSS 101. One of the things um, that I am actually going to be doing um, with the book is when, see, with reading, you have to go through different skills throughout the semester. One of the first skills they really learn about is vocabulary and context, looking at a word and figuring out what it is by what's surrounding the word. But one of the things that I'm going to be using is a website called Quizlet. Um, um, kind of a show of hands of who's, who's used Quizlet before. Yeah, so Quizlet is a wonderful website where you, are, you can create online flashcards. Uh, the nice thing about it is they're not physical cards. You don't you know, throw them out the end of the semester. You can keep them for as long as you want. And that's what I'm going to be doing um, with some of the vocabulary words that we have been discovering in the book throughout the semester. I've added some vocabulary words to Quizlet, but students are going to have the opportunity to add their own words. So for example, one of their assignments is to really go through and as they read, any words that they find that are unfamiliar to them or anything that they want to look up, they can add to the list of vocabulary words. So as a class, they'll be sharing their words with the other students in the class. Um, and the nice thing about Quizlet is it, no, it doesn't only help with vocabulary, um, it helps with spelling of the vocabulary as, as well because there's a lot of different exercises. Um, another thing that I will be doing with the book is I found different articles with a similar theme to the book, um, but also they might be related to the book. And usually what I do um, is I have different articles that I bring up in the class that we study. Um, so in this case, the theme is similar, and I think that's, that's fairly helpful, the fact that I'm really trying to focus on the specific themes from the book, gather articles maybe about the Appalachian Trail, conservation in general, people that walk the trail. We are going to be reading a little bit about Grandma Gatewood. Um, the woman that walked the Appalachian Trail twice with very little supplies. So, and what's nice is through library resources, I have this free. I can download this through BCC, through the eBrary. Um, so we might be reading a little bit of that as well during the semester. Let's see. Book assignments, so um, one of the things that I sometimes do is I have them write a summary of different chapters. Um, 
In this case, though, I am giving them specific questions about a grouping of chapters. So we are going to be trying to read the whole book this semester, kind of a two, kind of what Lynn's doing. We're going two by two by twos kind of each week. But for each section of three chapters, there's different questions about, you know, um, where, where did these chapters take place? What happened? What information did Bill give us? Because Bill, um, Bill Bryson gives a lot of educational information in the chapters along with his narration of what's going on. And he also gives a lot of his own opinions, his, his personal opinions of everything. So like what, so, so basically that's why I decided I'm gonna do it like a question thing instead of just saying, you know, write a summary, here's some questions that they're going to have to answer as they're reading. And then the last thing I'm doing, well, I'm doing this throughout the semester, but um, in a reading class, we do specifically focus on different skills that the students have to learn. And the book is really good for, you know, looking at those skills. So as we look at the textbook, it's like, okay, well, we've learned about these skills here, let's apply them now. And that's what we're doing. We're applying them to the book we're using. So for example, um, critical reading. Critical reading is where you get into for example, looking at commercials and advertisements and trying to figure out, okay, well, what are they trying to make me think? What are they trying to advertise? So for example, today I actually went onto the Appalachian Trail website and right on it, a, a Walk in the Woods is right there. So the, A Walk in the Woods, the movie, is a giant advertising, um, you know, it, it helps. You know, it helps people understand what the Appalachian Trail is all about. Uh, purpose and tone. Bill Bryson's tone of voice throughout the book is so dynamic. He changes from, you know, being sarcastic about something to being actually, you know, really bitter about different things. So, and he never quite says what he's thinking. So that's where you have, you know, the, you know, for example, trying to figure out what someone's saying with the, without them actually saying what they're thinking. And Bill Bryson does this throughout the whole book. Um, so that, that's kind of how I'm using the book. Does, would anybody like, like me to show you what Quizlet looks like for a moment, or do we even have time for that right now? Um, yeah, okay. So students, and if you can see in the background, this isn't really like, completely accurate, but basically these are representations of people that are using the website right now. So I think that's kind of cool, looking at the little bubbles. Students can use their Facebook account, their Google account, or create a new account on this website if they want to use it. Oops. So for example, this is, um, this is the list of words that I've added, so camouflage, um, Appalachian Trail, trekking pole, Swiss Army knife. So all these words are found in the first chapter. Um, and the nice thing about this is when you add, when you add a word, when you add a word, so for example, I'm going to add Come on, there we go. I'm going to add Bill Bryson. So the nice thing about this is you can create your own definition, but you can also auto-define it as well and see what other users have created. Um, so for example, um, he actually had, so someone's already written a little bit about Bill Bryson there. This author grew up in Iowa in the 1950s. He splits his time between America and England. Um, or for example, well, mind you, you can also add a picture, but as you can see, Bill Bryson is not there at all. <laughs> um, the nice thing about this website is it is free, but you can get different things if you upgrade it, but you really don't, I never found that I really had to upgrade it at any point in time. Um, for example, Greenhorn, I've added a picture of student driver, and when students are adding pictures to the vocabulary, they're not only just choosing a picture, they're finding out which picture best applies to the word that I'm trying to define. 
and it actually helps them learn it a little bit faster. But also the nice thing about this as well is you can do different activities on this website. For example, I only have a small amount of, so my record in the corner means that I've done this, I think that's 30 seconds, but I have to drag the word over to the appropriate picture and the appropriate definition. Um, so again, there's another different activity to do on there. Speller, spelling. I can't tell you how many times I've spelt camouflage wrong. So this has actually helped me a lot. Um, test. I'm actually going to be doing, um, I'm going to be adding more different, not just vocabulary questions, but questions about the book itself and also about the textbook on here. So each time I click test, I get a new test every single time I click it. Um, so that, that's kind of some of the things you can do with this website. But that's what I've done with this website. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you, everyone, for your introductions of what you've done. Um, so now it's time for us to ask questions of panelists or to share maybe what we're thinking about doing in our classes. And you all can ask each other questions, too, you know. Um, it's, not, <laughs> it's not limited one side to the other. So does anyone have any thoughts they'd like to share, questions, or? Yeah. One question from Mike, just um, your choice of uh, splitting the chapters like that. Or is it one and four, eight to ten, just uh, a time save, or are you really honing in on? Is this something that dies out in the middle? I've only finished chapter three, so I, I'm thinking, is there a really boring stretch that I'm going to want to avoid myself, or what? So. Well, in a perfect world, I wanted to use the whole book, but yeah. I figured that I would need to devote four assignments to it in order to do that, because that would probably take a larger chunk of the semester. What I did is I targeted areas that would speak to these particular tasks, like. The, the scene in Gatlinburg is included in that. The encounter with the bear is when he describes the difference between a grizzly bear and a black bear. Mm -hmm. That's included along with the scene where he thinks he has the encounter with the bear outside and he's freaking out. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's a hilarious scene. I know you see it. Yeah, it's chapter yet. two. Yeah, I think right. Um, yeah, it's actually the latest, like in the eight to oh, ten and, range yeah, where yeah, he actually yeah. thinks okay. there's a bear out there and uh, Katz is like, ah, okay. I'm sleeping, I don't care. And he's like having a coroner because he thinks there's a bear outside. So to kind of chronicle what his reactions are mm -hmm. to the bear, if that was a bear. So it's like, hey, is that something you would do if you really were encountering a bear? Or would you be like Katz and just kind of sleep it off and not worry about it quite so much? So I tried to kind of choose sections from the text that would speak to the individual writing tasks. Mm -hmm. And there is so much going on with the text that it was actually just kind of hard to say, okay, these are the tasks I want them to focus on. Um, because there's so many more things um, that I could have wound up doing with it. Okay, cool. The questions. Have, has everyone finished reading I actually power read the book um, in the last week of summer vacation. Uh, beginning of the summer, I read like maybe 150 pages, and then in a matter of a week, I read the rest of it. Um, and it was actually kept me engrossed. You know, I think um, it's it's a page turner. It's really really engaging. Um, the historical information that he gives and the contextual information it blends really nicely with the narrative. So. So you set aside a couple of hours over a series of days and you can get right through it. Yeah. It's a great text. It's, it's an easy read. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. you know, hoping it'll work hard for students with various interests. And one of the things my students are doing with the book as well is annotating. So as I was, even an doing the annotations was fun because I drew like a picture of some dude with a question mark over his head in a tent and then there was a bear with a question mark over his head as well. For, it was one of the chapters they were talking about bears accidentally getting the tent. So, you know, it helped me remember the chapter. Yeah, I um, I'm using the book in my just um, 101 and English Show 92, something I always do with 101, no matter what the one book is, it's kind of an easy in, no matter what the text is, mm -hmm. is when we do talk about different strategies um, or modes, I have them, you know, I give them a section of the book to read a couple chapters and then say, you know, find a passage that provides an example of narration or provides an example of description that you've just read about in theory mm -hmm. and now try to apply it here and defend what it is that's narrative about it, or defend what it is that's descriptive or you know, illustrative or whatever. Um, and I think that helps students to bring together sort of the 
comp reading that they're doing along with application before they start trying to do it themselves. And today I asked them to, I just gave them a, the first two chapters, I also asked students to um, come up with a good chapter for the title, because these chapters are just chapter one, chapter mm -hmm. two, um, as a way to kind of bring together what purpose and audience a little bit, you know, what was the purpose of that chapter, those individual chapters, because, you know, beginning of the semester we're sort of speaking about those sort of foundational writing issues. Yeah, I, I actually did that. I came up with titles for each of the chapters while I was reading it, mm. so I could remember. And I, mean, I know something I'm still wondering about is the division not only into chapters, but into parts. Why do we have part one and part two? What's going on there? Why that division in the middle of the book when he's still talking about his working on the trail? There's always something back in my mind that keeps thinking, I, I should have finished it, I should have finished it. So you almost kind of see that mm -hmm. in the second half. Is like he's, <coughs> he's kind of driving with the trail, getting out of the car, walking, and then getting back into the car. But there's something always in him just going, I just wish I could just do the whole thing. I wish I hadn't stopped. And you kind of, even though he doesn't really say it, you kind of sense it. So there's always that feeling in the back of your head of, you know, like I think of trails I haven't finished and gone, I should have finished it. I, I know I could have. So, yeah. He does make up excuses. Yeah. Why he didn't finish the trip mm -hmm. along the way. You know, rained too hard and it was too muddy, or it was yeah. too steep of a climb. Yeah. 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 Well, he says he's not like these guys that are 21 that carry the packs on their heads and walk, you know, walk across the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would give him a break. Another one of, the, one of the things I thought about was the theme of age and youth, which is something came very real. I actually have, I did climb Katahdin a couple of times in the 80s. And although he said at the beginning that this, not, you don't find very many people there, the truth is, you go up there in September, there's a rocky spine up on one of the trails. And it's like going up into an anthill because there's a line of people going all the way up. Oh, my, my experience on that was climbing up at my pace and 12-year-old boys skipping past me. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to throw them off the line. <laughs> 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 but I didn't. Yes. Yes. When I was twelve, I climbed Mount Washington with my parents. And looking back on that, how could I ever do that? Anyway, and then I'm supposed to this weekend go back to Mount Washington to carry my parents' ashes up there because they had requested to go and be buried on top of Mount Washington. And I'm like, I'm not climbing it. I am driving. <laughs> but they will be, you know, released Sunday. So, yeah. So it's different when you're a young person, <laughs> when you're older. There isn't any way I could get up the, the rockiness. Of, 
And Mount Washington is supposed to be a catwalk, he said, right? A pie, a pie walk compared to some of the other climbs he had? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of my sons and one's wife did it a few weeks ago. It wasn't, it wasn't that easy. No, I didn't think it was easy when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> I think expectations play a role in what you're talking about as well. I can remember uh, several years ago, a um, group of friends from work decided to climb Mount Manadna. And they said, oh, it's an easy climb. You, you know, only a couple of hours. You're doing it in an afternoon. No big deal. Well, for some reason, I don't know if we were climbing a different trail from one they were talking about, but I didn't find it to be that easy. Oh, that yeah. mom and dad don't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on the other side. Yeah, yeah we we're trying to go up. And then, of course, it started raining, you know, <laughs> as we're trying to come down. Yeah, and that's something, you know, we hear Bryson say mm -hmm. that everyone coming off the trail, it wasn't what they expected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, my father actually uh, walked the trail um, with um, his Boy Scout troop. Um, Whitty was, you know, one of the, um, I guess, one of the counselors. And what's funny is you see the before and after picture. Giant backpack, clean shaven, um, just looks green as as ever. And by the end, it's just like he's building on muscle. He's got he's got a beard, and it is kind of funny because um, with him, you know, it wasn't what he was expecting, but he enjoyed it. But he was throwing out so much. Well, not throwing out, but giving away so much food because. You don't realize what you really need. Like when they threw out the peanuts, I was like, why are they throwing out the peanuts in, in the book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> it was just kind of one of those things. So I wonder if you want to mention the lip guide to folks if they might mm -hmm. be aware, or not be aware of the resources that we right. have online. Right, so if you go to the library webpage to the right, it, it will say course guides. You want to click on that. And there's a lip guide there that has all our resources. Um, suggested other books. Um, like I just watched Wild with Reese with a student. That was another book that I really enjoyed doing the Pacific Rim. There's the Grandma Gatley. There's another one too. It's called Footpath My Ass. And that's another woman in her 70s who hiked the AT. So there's other different resources out there that you can do, utilize. Anyone see the movie? Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it didn't watch the movie trailer with yeah. my class yesterday. You watched the trailer? Yeah, sure, you watched yeah. the trailer. Yeah. That's, That's a good idea. idea. I keep checking on YouTube, see if somebody pirated it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't watch the trailer with the class. The trailer sounds awesome. Yeah. What did you think of it? Um, I, I, it was it was a good movie, but I didn't think the character development uh, mm. was as spot on as the book. Yeah. Like the character, Mary Ellen. Yeah, she's in it very briefly, and yeah. you know, it does convey the uh, amount of irritation. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the book, but very briefly and not in as much detail. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the characters, the characters in the movie are much older, older than the mm -hmm. characters. Yeah, yeah as well. Yeah, right. Right. Timeline too, yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everyone for sharing their ideas and for um, all of you for part for participating. We have some handouts here that if you haven't gotten one already in your travels or um, well it's also online but um, of all the events that are coming just to highlight big event uh, Bill Bryson is going to be doing a Skype conversation with us in Attleboro, Fall River, New Bedford, Tom too. Yeah. He's on all camp. We are really crossing our fingers on the technology for this one. But uh, he, he's in England. He lives in England. London residents. Yeah. yeah, so um, he was very kind to do this, and it's mainly going to be Q&A. So, it, all Q&A, basically. Right, he was stressed. Yeah. He did not want to just do a spiel at Nathaniel Philbrick. Oh, great. He wants Q&A. So that's, um, if you bring your classes, maybe have your students ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to come with questions if you're, uh, so it's October 8th from 10 to 11 a.m. if you have a class at that time. Uh, I know it's filmed. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Is it being filmed? Yes. Yeah, is it recorded? Yes, I haven't submitted any work yet. Yeah. If I would like to that. Yeah, and um, that was another thing I was thinking earlier. We try to videotape most of our events that we can. So if you don't have an opportunity, oh, you were mentioning, um, who said they had a Saturday class? You did, yeah. um, Amy. So if your students can't make it to an event, I, I sometimes do this with my online students. Mm -hmm. Once the video is available, just link it, in. link it up, and then you know extra credit or whatever seems appropriate. Um, and students are kind of excited to have the opportunity sometimes 
to get that extra credit or engage in it in some way when they know they've got to be at work nine to five. Right. And two, too, if you haven't, I know sometimes we get faculty who maybe not have a course run in the fall that's running in the spring. We're running this programming year round. This is our first year, so it will be offered in the spring. We've already got some really good programming. We're actually in the works of retaining a bus to take faculty, staff, and students to a section of the AT in Western Ooh. Mass as our last event. That'll be on Earth Day, April 22nd on a Friday. Um, so that should be something that'll be really fun. And for those who are just on an easier hike, we do have, I had to change the date. It's October 24th. It's, we're doing Copa Cut Woods. It is a Saturday. Um, just so other staff members can, other people can get a chance to go because sometimes people can't get away during the week. Um, that should be really interesting, and that's for all levels. I mean, literally, we're going to be hiking on old roads so you can drive a car through, so it's not anything hard or anything like that. And we'll be doing that with the Carol's Educators Club, and they'll be doing something fun for kids, so be very child friendly. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Expectations, not very hard. So you're right. Like, not yeah. I like, noticed that. She hikes a lot. <laughs> well, that's something you have to be careful of. Yes. If you go to New Hampshire and it says easy hike, believe me, it's not an easy hike. It's more like moderate to high. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you.